Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dor, and today I want to talk about dating INFJs. So what can you expect when you're dating an INFJ? What are INFJs like in relationships? How can you deal with an INFJ's bad sides and how can you better appreciate their good sides? Another important question is how do you attract an INFJ to begin with? What are INFJs attracted to? What do we like in another person? And of course I think attraction is very personal to you. It depends on what you have grown to love and appreciate in other people. But I think there are some general things that are very important to the INFJ. First is, I think the INFJ deeply will respect a person who is brave, a person who can take risks, a person who can try new things. The INFJ will deeply appreciate somebody who is very authentic and very real, you know, a character, a great individual, somebody that shows character and personality, somebody that will go against the crowd, somebody that will speak their own mind and their own truth and will act out even if it's socially inappropriate. I think the INFJ will also really appreciate a person that is loving and caring. You know, I think INFJs hold kindness from other people to be higher than intelligence. I think we love a person more for their ability to show love and care to other people than for their ability to be intelligent or uh, clever. I think the INFJ finds games deeply unattractive. I think INFJs tend to find people who act tough and strong or who fake things to be deeply unattractive. And I think INFJs find people who seek a lot of attention to be very unattractive. I think INFJs struggle with uh, people who act without thinking. And I think INFJs value and greatly appreciate a person who can think ahead. I think uh, INFJs tend to appreciate creativity in other people and a person who can see things from multiple sides. And the INFJ will greatly appreciate somebody that can keep an open mind and somebody that will show curiosity towards new ideas and towards new possibilities. But yeah, those are and maybe some of my personal things. So first of all, INFJs in relationships tend to be, because they are introverted intuitive types, described as very calm and very understanding. They can take on the perspectives of the other person that they are talking to. They can understand the situation clearly from the bigger picture. They can keep a level head in a conflict or in a difficult situation. They are almost outrageously calm and able to think about the situation very clearly. Because they also have introverted feeling as a very important part of their personality, they also tend to be very introspective. They tend to have a lot of self-awareness and they tend to know themselves very well. And that means they are very easy to deal with. In these times of decision making, the INFJ usually knows themselves and what they want. The INFJ is very independent and doesn't need a lot of help. They don't need a lot of guidance or outer control. They will get a job done with minimal questions asked. They are able to take care of themselves in a difficult situation. They don't need you and that's perhaps both good and bad. The INFJ is also a lot of a counselor. They all thrive in having nurturing and supportive roles in relationships. They like to cook and care for the partner they have. They like to take care of the other person. They like to make the other person laugh and feel better when the other person is having a bad time. The INFJ is good at making other people relax around them. You can feel safer on the INFJ and you can feel that you can talk about anything without judgment. So the downsides you can face with the INFJ are plenty to say the least. There are several issues that INFJs have that can make them less appealing in relationships. First of all, INFJs tend to be very unspontaneous. They can take a long time before they do something and often their desire to think ahead and to think about a situation before they move can make them appear very slow and very unresponsive. It can appear as if because they are taking so long time that they don't care at all. And a potential partner might assume that just because he hasn't said anything or because he hasn't done anything, he must not be interested or he must not want to. 
Beyond this, the INFJ can be described as sensitive. They are easily hurt by the other person's actions. They are easily offended by a bad choice of words. They uh, can feel, react very strongly to conflict and tension in a relationship. INFJs have talked about in many videos struggle with disappearing and remaining attentive in relationships. They struggle with responding to phone calls, they struggle with paying attention to their partner and to the other person and to people around them. They forget about other people as they get too lost in their own minds. INFJs can get very obsessive about something and can get so lost in something they forget about everything around them. The INFJ can disappear or ghost their partner if they feel too overwhelmed or too pressured. So the partner of an INFJ has to have the ability to provide a healthy amount of distraction to the INFJ. When the INFJ gets too stuck in their own heads and too obsessive about something, so the INFJ's partner might find a way or might need to find a way to keep the INFJ distracted in a positive and healthy manner, offering them alternatives, showing them options, and thinking creatively to help resolve the INFJ's blocks, to help them move forward. When the INFJ gets stuck on something or shows little progress in something, their partner can help by finding alternatives or by showing them another way. Beyond that, when you notice that the INFJ is getting overwhelmed, often it is that they have too much inside their own heads. They are dealing with and they are putting too much on their own shoulders. Mentally, they are making a problem too big. They are getting too lost and too confused in different questions. They're getting their heads all tangled up. So when you're dealing with an INFJ, often what you need to do is you need to provide them with a healthy amount of distraction. You need to offer them change and variation. You need to show them options. You need to remind them of alternative paths. If they get stuck or blocked somewhere, give them some kind of idea or some kind of option, some different route to take than the one they have laid before them. Often the INFJ narrows down too much and loses out and misses out on opportunities present before them. Other times the INFJ can make a problem too big, we can overthink a problem, even though we rarely admit to overthinking. The INFJ is a type that uh, can take too much on their own shoulders, they can get too overwhelmed by the bigger picture of something, they can get too stressed out by everything that is happening around them. And in these times of overwhelm, what is important is to help untangle their mess, you know, when they're getting lost in all their thoughts and uh, stuck on all different options and uh, too caught up in the chaos of things, to help them untangle things and to show them different ways to tie things up to make sure it all connects, to show them a way forward and to show them a way to remove some of that clutter inside their own heads. Another important aspect is that of uh, emotional reassurance and love, you know. I think INFJs never really ask for love, but I think they need it. And I think they need a lot of it. And that's uh, to say appreciative words, that's words of affirmation, that's anything that can show the INFJ that uh, they are appreciated and that they are cared for and that their efforts are known and understood and seen by the other person. The INFJ in a relationship wants to feel that the other person deeply loves them for who they are. Otherwise they can fall into more unhealthy tendencies of assuming they are unwanted and unnecessary in a relationship. Often INFJs tend to sail more on the avoidance scale of relationships than the anxious or uh, over attached scale of the personality dynamics, relationship dynamics. The INFJ is more likely to remove themselves from a difficult situation than to become overbearing or to become too much on their partner. The INFJ is a person that, sure, often takes on a caregiving role in relationships and often wants to support others. But often, you know, some of the, one of the most important things to an INFJ that's authenticity from the other person. Often, 
what the INFJ craves the most is uh, that their partner will be real with them and will be truthful with them, that the uh, other person will tell them how, what they are feeling, what they need, what they are struggling with, what they are going through. The INFJ wants to feel connected to their partner and to know what's going on in their life and what their struggles are so that they can provide an accurate amount of help. So often the INFJ needs uh, the other person to share with them what they want, otherwise the INFJ is lost trying to guess. And, you know, nothing is more frustrating to an INFJ than when they try to help but fail to because they don't know the other person. It can happen many times in my own life that I've tried to help another person only to realize that the other person didn't want that help at all or that that help was unnecessary or made the situation even worse. That uh, I thought I knew what the person wanted but to discover that no, they don't want this at all. So what helps an INFJ is if the other person knows what they want, even if it's stupid or even if it sounds impossible, try to communicate what uh, you need from the INFJ rather than to leave them guessing. And I'm going to end on another and very important one, and that is the importance of supporting the INFJ in their dreams and aspirations. If you can support the INFJ in their projects and aspirations, no matter how crazy they are, and bear with them while they are working towards something that sounds seems to be impossible, you will have uh, the INFJ's love and the pre deepest appreciation for this. The INFJ needs their intellectual projects and their pursuits and needs to know it's okay to work on these projects and to devote themselves to this. And the worst thing is to feel that your projects are somehow going against the needs and wishes of your partner or that uh, your partner wants or expects something else from you. And I think it also comes down to trusting that the INFJ will find a way, you know, that we will find a way to do something and to get something done, and that we don't need the micromanagement, and we don't need the control from other people to tell us what to do, or how to get something done, or what route to take in life. To over-insert yourself in an INFJ's life and to tell them what projects they should be working on and what they should be doing with their life that can be very, very harmful and can keep the INFJ from growth and it can also keep your parts uh, keep you apart causing your roads to go different ways now something about the INFJ is the INFJ likes to feel like the guide in the relationship you know the person that is helping keep things together and to help you keep organized and to help you stay balanced the INFJ wants to help you maintain a healthy lifestyle the INFJ wants to help you ensure that you keep your life in control, they want to support you in your goals and projects and to make sure that you're going to get them done and that things are going to be okay. They want to act as a comforting blanket or mushy pillow to rest on, you know. The INFJ wants to provide insight and advice that can help you solve your problems and to get through difficult situations. And the INFJ wants to support you in any way they can through any forms of caregiving and generosity, giving, support, help. Anything they can do that will make you make your life a little easier and help you through any difficulty that you may be having. So if you're an INFJ and you're watching this video, let me know in the comments down below what is your favorite way to be loved by another person? And what is the best thing a partner can do to help you when you're going through a difficult time? And if you're Anybody who is trying to date an INFJ or anybody in a relationship with an INFJ, feel free to let me know how you're doing and what's going on and let me know if there's anything I can help you with or anything you might want to understand about the INFJ that can make your relationship easier. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.